More than a dozen Republican lawmakers just blocked Speaker Mike Johnson's bill to renew the FISA surveillance rule. Congressman Corey Mills is one of those lawmakers who voted it down, and he joins me now. Why did you vote against this bill? Did you vote against it because Trump told you to? No, not at all. And in fact, what we looked at was the 287,000 plus violations by the FBI where they've abused and misused FISA to pry and sp uh, spy on American citizens. This is not about a you know, defeat for Johnson, but more about a victory for the American privacy. When you think about the amount of data privacy that's being sold, when you think about the violations where no one's been held accountable, not Ray, not Page, not Struck, no one who's actually gone after the president on crossfire hurricane or spied on a presidential election, which is in fact election interference, all of these things have not actually changed. And so the idea of reauthorizing for five more years something that's been grossly abused for this long, I just couldn't in good conscience do so. Well, there are some people who say, look, we just lost an important anti-terror tool. Can you tell me what we gained by not renewing FISA? Well, what we actually have gained is the fact that now you're going to have warrant procedures in there that can stop the abuse of this. What you're gaining from this is the fact that now there's criminal penalties for those who abuse uh, FISA who are within the FBI or any of the IC communities. What we've gained from this is the ability to not have it for a five-year renewal but a two-year renewal. So there's many reforms. The issue, and by the way, if FISA was to actually lapse in, in, on the 19th, it would still continue to run for another year. So it's not as if, Barney, this kind of tall tale that it's just going to disappear tomorrow and we're going to go black. That is not exactly the case. It would run for another year subsequently. And there's other actual procedures okay. and policies within FISA, not just 702. Okay, fair enough, sir. Uh, the president is insisting that the U.S. is committed to Israel. Watch this. As I told Prime Minister Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Let me say it again, ironclad. We're going to do all we can to protect Israel's security. Congressman, do you support giving more aid and weapons to Israel now that they're threatened by an attack from Iran? Well, I've always been one of those that agrees to support Israel. It's our longest standing ally in the Middle East. It's a great partner for us, and they have a right to defend themselves after horrendous and barbaric attacks. But we also have to bear in mind that there's still hostages that are being held. If the American government had hundreds of hostages that were being held, we would be looking at the same type of operations militarily as what you're seeing Israel carry out. And so what I'm worried most about, though, is Biden's refusal to accept that he's the reason Iran has all the money they have to fund fund Hamas, to fund Hezbollah, to fund the Houthi rebels who he delisted on the terrorist organization because he released billions in fungible assets that were unfrozen and refuses to impose the sanctions that would stop the tens of billions of dollars in increased oil that is being exported out of Iran that's helping to fund these types of operations. As we just saw from U.S. aid as well from administrative powers, about seven days prior to the Hamas attack on October 7th, there was a million dollars released by U.S. aid that was actually able to fall into the hands of a charity that was run by Hamas. So we need to start understanding when it comes to UNRWA and others that if you're pro-Israel, you can't be pro-Iran as well. Uh, Congressman, what do you make of Rashida Tlaib, who is a member of Congress, who refuses to condemn the death to America chance that we heard in Dearborn, Michigan? She won't condemn it. She won't even answer to it. What do you make of that? Well, you know what? It's absolutely sad that we have pro-Hamas sympathizers who swear an oath to protect our Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and won't stand with our allies. I don't think anyone can look at what happened on October 7th and look at this and say, this is okay. You know, that's the equivalent of someone saying that on 9-11 something happened, which we had another member who made that comment. This is the Israelis 9-11. We have to acknowledge the fact that just as we wouldn't have another nation tell us that we couldn't go after those responsible, we shouldn't be demanding a ceasefire to stop them from going after hostages. And oh, by the way, there's a Americans who are still being held hostage as well. And so we need to continue to support our allies. And if there are members of Congress who won't do that, in my personal opinion, they should find a new job. <laughs> yes, sir. Congressman Corey Mills, thanks very much for being with us today. You come back soon, please. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir.